you may not need an introduction to this sheep. This is Dolly the Clone Sheep. So just over 20 years ago, when uh, Dolly the Sheep was introduced to the world, the world's press descended on the Roslyn Institute, where I work. The Roslyn Institute is a long-established uh, research institute where we uh, undertake research into farm animal production, health, and welfare. But Dolly the Sheep made the Roslyn Institute world famous. I think the whole idea of being able to make muddled copies of an animal uh, really intrigued everybody, and especially when people started to talk about whether we could apply the cloning technology to human beings. Well, of course, I think that this has rather distracted um, us from actually the main purpose behind the cloning of Dolly the Sheep. The purpose was to develop a technology for making genetically modified sheep and other farm animals. And at that time, there was a lot of interest in the potential of genetic modification to make animals, give animals new characteristics, new genes. And in the case of Dolly, that was part of a program where they're trying to make uh, new protein medicines in the milk of genetically modified sheep. Uh, for example, factor nine, which is used to treat uh, a blood clotting disease. Well, I was working at the Roslyn Institute at the time, and I was also working on developing technology for genetic modification, but I was working on a different farm animal. I was working on the chicken. And this is one of my chickens, a very fine-looking animal, and he is, in fact, genetically modified. So we were developing uh, a technology. We had to work, make different uh, inventions to genetically modify chickens compared to sheep. But this is a genetically modified chicken, and uh, if you looked at a couple of his chicks, which I show here, uh, we introduced a new gene which was passed on to one of his chicks and not the other. And I think you can spot the one that got the, the, gen <laughs> the genetic modification. So these chicks are illum illuminated by a fluorescent light, and we'd added a new gene that co codes for a protein called green fluorescent protein. So these ch this chick expresses a new protein and it glows green in fluorescent light. But it had no other effect on the, on the chicken. And it was really just as part of the development of the technology that we used that gene that we could identify easily by using the illumination to see the green fluorescence. But uh, why are we developing this technology and what do we think are the potential values of using genetic modification? Well, I have to say that when people ask me what I carry out research on and I say chickens, I usually get a bit of a snigger. You know, people don't take chickens as seriously as I think they should. So here are some of the chicks, a few, few chicks that we hatched at the Institute one day, in the photo, very cute little fluffy chicks. But do you know how many chicks are hatched in the world a year? Over 50 billion. Just think about it, 50 billion chickens. Most of those are chickens for meat, but they're also the chickens for producing eggs. So the chicken is a really important food animal to people worldwide. It's a healthy food, and it's acceptable across many cultures. Uh, but if we think about 50 billion chickens now, that's about, uh, if we look at this graph, it's a graph of the population of the world. Uh, it's, uh, in 2015, the population of the world was uh, estimated to be about 7.3 billion. So 50 billion chickens, that's about seven chickens per person per year. But also, if we look at this graph, and this is data from the United Nations, we know that the population of the world is going to be increasing up to uh, 11.2 billion in 2100, yes, or, or 9.7 billion in 2050. So how are we going to keep up with the demand for food? And that's one of the big challenges now. And this graph here is from the Gates Foundation website, and it shows the predicted increase in demand for meat. Um, and the demand for meat is going to go up for all of the animals that we eat, uh, beef, cattle, mutton, pork, but particularly chickens, chicken meat and chicken eggs. And it's estimated that by 2050, we'll need 170% more chicken meat to meet growing demand. So how have we achieved that in the past? Well, we've done it by genetic breeding. And here we can see on the left the chicken from 1950, and it's a rather scrawny beast. In 2014, they're much bigger. We've used genetic selection to produce chickens that are much meatier. Uh, and we've also made them much more efficient in producing meat from food. So in 1950, we would get 330 kilograms of meat per tonne of feed, but by 2014, we get 590 kilograms of chicken meat per tonne of feed. 
So this is more efficient, so we need to use less grain, which means we need to use less land to produce the food that we want, that is the animal food. And we know that as people get gradually wealthier, they will want to eat more meat. But there's a real problem in producing farm animals, and uh, although we can select, use genetics to select those animals to grow more, to be more efficient in the use of the feed we give them, they're threatened by many diseases. And in particular, I'm particularly interested in the potential threat of bird flu. So here we can see in the middle, there's a duck, and we know that bird flu is a disease that is present in birds, in wild birds, and particularly wild water birds. So it's not going to go away. It's present in those wild birds. We can't control the, the, wild, the infection of wild birds, and also they migrate, so they spread bird flu around the world. And we also know something else about bird flu. We know that it can tra transfer from uh, ducks to chickens, but also to mammals. So bird flu can infect a whole range of mammals that you can see here, from uh, whales, bats, horses, dogs, cats, pigs, and importantly, humans. So bird flu is a problem for production of chickens because they catch it from the uh, wild water birds and the migrating birds. But it's also a problem for us because we know from studies of the bird flu virus that, uh, and human flu virus is that they are related. So the pandemic human flu that we get going around the world can often come from bird flu. So we need to think about how we control bird flu for the welfare of chickens and the production of chickens, but also from human health. So how do we control it? Well, I'm afraid at the moment, if there's a bird flu outbreak, uh, the main way we control it is by slaughtering the chickens to stop spread of the disease. And that can have uh, huge consequences. So this is uh, information from an outbreak in the US in 2014, where bird flu was spread by birds migrating over the Arctic Circle and down through the, uh, North America. Uh, and there, the losses of birds were 48.1 million chickens, uh, and there was a consequent 80% increase in the price of eggs, and the great cost of dead poultry, over 191 million, and big economic damage from the outbreak. So how can we deal with this? Uh, we can vaccinate chickens, like we do humans, but there isn't a proper vac a good vaccine available. We can shut the chickens away, which is actually what we've had to do in the UK this year, uh, but that doesn't, isn't compatible with free range, about which we're very keen. So this is where the work that was mentioned very briefly at the beginning with my colleague Lawrence Tiley developed. So he uh, is a scientist at Cambridge University, and he works on the flu virus, and particularly bird flu virus. And he developed uh, a new gene that, when he introduced it into chicken cells, would stop the chicken cells being infected with flu virus. So he came to me and he said, can we make genetically modified chickens with this new gene? And we put the gene into chickens, uh, and we then did an experiment. So we had a group of chickens that were our usual chickens, and then we had uh, brothers and sisters of those chickens that were genetically modified and we infected them with flu virus. And the exciting result was that the, um, the non-GM chickens infected, got, were infected and passed that flu virus onto the other chickens. But when we looked at the chickens that were co-housed with the chickens that were genetically modified after infection with flu, they did not pass the disease on. So this is really one step on the way to using genetic modification to make birds resistant to flu. But the importance, I think, of this was that it demonstrated a use for genetic modification to give the birds a, a characteristic which they wouldn't have otherwise. We couldn't make chickens uh, resistant to bird flu by our normal breeding strategies. And as I say, bird flu is a really, uh, really big challenge to the production of chickens. So here are a whole range of farmed animals, and diseases of all sorts are a real problem in producing farm animals. Uh, they're a pro problem for smallholder farmers as well as for large-scale farmers. They're a problem for uh, free-range farmers and for intensive farmers. And um, we need to think about how we can control all, uh, all these diseases to uh, 
in terms of uh, improving the welfare of the animals and the uh, business of the farmers and to stop economic losses and also to deal with the challenge of uh, producing all the food that we're going to require as the population of the world inexorably increases over the next decades. So, in Scotland, we've been developing this genetic modification technology in chickens and other farm animal species. And it is one of the ways that we could use to control disease, which is only going to become a bigger challenge into the face of, uh, for example, climate change. Um, and, uh, but in, and in Scotland, Dolly the sheep is held up as an example of innovation uh, in science and technology, but also in Scotland, uh, we're not allowed to produce GM food. So I think I'd like to leave you with a question today. Should we be leading the world in these technologies in a responsible way to solve these problems related to food production? Or should we be stepping back and not get involved in taking these new technologies forward? Thank you. Thank you.